problem in our society. What you need to do is free up interest rates. Interest rates are the price of money, and we shouldn't have price controls on the price of money. Thank you, Senator. They've destroyed 99% of our purchasing power in 100 years as well. You told the Des Moines Register that you don't like government subsidies. It interferes with the free market. Let's go back to Kate. Kate what do you want to say about the Fed? Because they're moving on from the Fed here. Yeah, this guy's kind of a joker anyway. <laughs> yeah. Why do they keep switching people out? Well, uh, you know, they, they, like I said earlier, they, you know, these uh, Republicans, except for Rand Paul, of course, are always kind of pushing all these different social issues. But, you know, it's, it's all talk, David. It's like, unless we really get into these systemic problems of our government and how it's funded and how this uh, Federal Reserve System is going to ultimately uh, collapse the dollar and collapse our economy. And, I mean, just look at it now with the whole student loan. I think they talked about the student loan problem right now, but I'm seeing more and more kids that are getting out of college and they're uh, you know, graduating with liberal arts degrees, but then, you know, I've talked <coughs> to friends before where they're having to get jobs that are not even related to their degree at all that they mm -hmm. spent fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on. So now we have a... Uh, this is, we have kids that don't really have real skills. You don't see guys that can go out and weld or fix cars anymore. And that's where mm -hmm. the real economy is at, is in manufacturing right. and, you know, that sort of thing. I can. Well, if you want to get a job in manufacturing, you need to get out of this country. You know, if you got a de <laughs> yeah. college degree, I guess the question ought to be at, at commencement uh, or your graduation ceremony, do you want fries with that uh, sheepskin? Uh, let's let's uh, hear what uh, Ben Carson's so, saying about crony capitalism. Let's go back to the debate. Thank you, doctor. I was just wondering if they have like a CNBC staff much. lottery where they you just pick draw names and then everyone gets to come quality. out and You've you know throw out a little uh, a hit or something on one of these uh, yeah. candidates. During the financial crisis, apart from your tax plan, are there specific steps that you would require from corporate America to try and reduce income inequality? I don't think it's so much about when the government orders a corporation to do something. In fact, that's part of the problem. If you saw that blimp that got cut loose for Maryland today. It's a perfect example of government. I mean, what we had was something the government made, basically a bag of gas that cut <laughs> loose, destroyed everything in its path, left yeah. thousands of people <laughs> powerless, but they couldn't get rid of it because we had too much money invested in it, so we had to keep it. That is our government today. Goodness. We saw it in the talking blimp. point from David Knight exactly over here. What yeah. we saw. We're on a mind so, meld here. And we have a report from Joe Biggs that's going to come up later at the end of this, uh, talking about what's really behind these blimps. Yeah, that's what people don't know: the that's secret right. behind the blimps. Above the average worker, when the bottom 90 percent of this country's economy has had stagnant wages for the past 40 years, somebody is taking it in the teeth. And it's not the folks on Wall Street. I'm not anti Wall Street, but I don't believe the government ought to wear a team jersey, pick winners and losers. The government Governor. ought to wear a striped shirt and just make Governor. sure the game is paid, played fairly. Now, everybody else has fudged their time and gone over, so please <laughs> don't cut me off too quick, Becky. All right, Governor. Let me okay. just close it up. How about this 15 way. more seconds? We need to be focusing on what fixes this country. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing that we never talk about, we haven't talked about it tonight. Why aren't we talking about instead of cutting benefits for old people, cutting benefits for sick people, why don't we say, let's cure the four big cost driving diseases, Governor. diabetes, heart disease, Governor, cancer, sorry. and Alzheimer's. If you do that, you don't just change the economy, you transform the lives of millions of hurting Americans. Governor, thank you. Gosh, I'd love for us to talk about Governor, something like that. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's a very good point, but as they keep pointing out, they use the example of the single mom trying to buy groceries Whoa. with four kids. Yeah, you know, and we don't need him talking about anything that big pharma's got drugs for. I mean, yeah, right. they've got that under control. They're controlling those symptoms, keeping us in prescriptions, and so we got to avoid that. Yeah, but they have Governor. all, they talk about the moms trying to buy the groceries for the four kids, but the moms have so little money, and they see the prices of the meat and all this stuff go up. So what do they buy? They go buy Cheetos. They go buy this, this uh, GMO crap. So, yes, they're trying to feed their family, but they're feeding their family with, you know, uh, not not healthy food, and it's not their fault. They have no other means to do it, but you know that yeah. contributes to the problem as well. It's a never-ending cycle. That's something Huckabee's talked about before, but he needs to run, understand he's running for president, not for Surgeon General, and I don't think Surgeon General ought to be dictating to us what kind of cures we're going to have. Look, the government bureaucracy in Washington is a metastasizing cancer. Cut that. Start with that, and that, that's what they need to do is get that off of our back. Stop the BLM 
from stealing people's ranches, from stealing their farms, from uh, fining a guy $75,000 a day. I mean, this is this is what we've got to stop. We've got to protect those endangered turtles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, while we kill all the cattle. We need to take yeah. a new approach of taxing, reforming how we tax and reforming the regulations in our in our country before it's too late. Senator Rubio, 30 seconds. We just need to keep sending guns and missiles to other foreign countries and go and invade them. That's what we need to do. Jeb is just so devoid of ideas. He is so incredibly irrelevant. But he does have a lot of super PAC money. He can't afford to pay his staff because nobody is sending him any contributions. But the big Wall Street people are sending him mega bucks and they do that through the super PACs. That was what Donald Trump was talking about before. In fact, the largest after tax gains is for the people at the lower end of the tax spectrum under my plan. And there's a bunch of things my tax plan does to help them. Number one, you have people in this country. Tax foundation, just to be clear, they said tw the no, you had to sick a tax plan. Well, let's have some cuts planned. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, because the 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 Senator, the tax foundation said after tax income for the top 1% under your plan would go up 27.9%. Well, you're talking and about people in the yeah. middle of the income spectrum, about 15 percent. Yeah, but that, because the math is, if you five percent of a million is a lot more than five percent of a thousand. So yes, no, this if someone makes more money terms. numerically, it's going to be higher. But but the greatest. The reality thing is, is the people at the top are not paying. Uh, the the billionaires are not paying anything anyway, because they they've written the tax code. Look, you can completely get rid of the IRS and just cut the government back to where it was three to five years ago. That's the bottom line. We're not coming anywhere close to paying for our government out of this because we've got funny money from the Fed. And they, they touched on that briefly, but they really didn't get to the heart of the issue. Under my plan, no business, big or small, will pay more than 25% flat rate on their business income. That is a dramatic tax decrease for hardworking people who run their own business. John, I'd like to address The other Senator point that I would make about our plan, one more point. It is the most pro-growth tax plan that I can imagine because it doesn't tax investments at all. You know why? The more you tax something, the less of it you get. I want, to be the, I want America to be the best place John, in the I'd, world for people to Senator, invest. thank John, you. I'd like to address Carl? this. John, could I follow up on we'll, this? We'll, we'll, we'll come plan. back around. I want to get to Governor Kasich. Uh, what are, what, what are the Governor Kasich again? Seriously? How do we decide who gets well, like I said, he was These bleeding guys on the floor love earlier. Kasich. <laughs> the moderator discretion. Uh, okay, so, so Governor Kasich, let's talk. Yes, moderator discretion. About, we don't want to talk to Trump. Uh, we'll just talk to Kasich. I could mention something <laughs> about my tax plan and how it relates to the discussion. Right. I thought this well, was going to be a free yeah. willing discussion. Sure, right? 30 seconds. All right. Much of the discussion is centered over whether or not the different tax plans help or affect the middle class. In fact, it's the chief argument by Democrats against many of the different flat tax proposals. Mine is unique in the sense that my tax plan actually gets rid of the payroll tax as well. It shifts it to the business and it would allow middle class people to get a tax cut. If you just cut their income tax, there isn't much income tax to cut. Mine actually cuts the payroll tax, and I think it would spread the tax cut across all socioeconomic levels and would allow then it to be something that would be broadly supported by the public in an election. That's disappointing so, because say, any business taxes are ultimately passed on to the public in either higher product costs or in lower wage increases. That's very disappointing. That would be rampant. Okay. Don't you think? The I mean, what are we doing? A ten percent flat rate. We're going to well, go. Well, as a businessman, you're a businessman, rate, David. So you know, yeah, I can imagine being in that situation. Like a lot of people have argued to get rid of the corporate tax completely. That's not politically correct to say that. We have to understand that corporate taxes are double taxation. Corporations not going to swallow that. They're going to pass those. Those are costs. They're going to pass their costs along or they're going to go out of business. Then they're going to pass that along in terms of increased prices for their products or in terms of lower wages or fewer employees. That's just that simple. And it's disappointing to see Rand Paul take that. smoking it are still smoking it. They're just now paying taxes. Given the budget pressures in Ohio and other states, is this a revenue stream you'd like to have? Well, first of all, we're running a $2 billion surplus, okay? We're not having a revenue problem right now. And sending mixed signals to kids about drugs is a disaster. Drugs is one of the greatest scourge in this country. I've spent five years of my administration working with my team to do a whole sort of things to try to rein in the problem of overdoses. We're putting people in prison. We can We're taking yeah. their private property. Overdoses, the question's about marijuana. <laughs> Who in the hell has ever overdosed from marijuana? Yeah. What are they going to overdose from? Pepsi and Taco Bell afterwards? Come on, <laughs> How about we talk about the, uh, the overdoses from the prescription pills you shove down people's throats every time they go to the friggin' hospital? 
for a cold or something. They start giving you codeine syrup, and they start giving you all this junk. You get your flu shot? You your get your flu, flu shot? Shots. You got this and that. Let's talk about the overdoses from the opium coming out of Afghanistan, which increased exponentially since we've been there. But, well, that's how they make money, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're, 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 well, not everyone's got their hand in the whole marijuana plant yet. The thing is, Kasich is an old guy. He's been around for all 44 years of the war on drugs, and he's seen it get worse. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Even if they had the legal authority for it, and they don't have the legal authority, there's no amendment to the Constitution to prohibit any of these drugs. They needed it for alcohol. Ask yourself why they don't have it for marijuana or anything else. They just ignore the Constitution is why. But from a pragmatic standpoint, even, it hasn't worked. But, of course, we can't change that. No, it's too much money. you got to pretend. Let us come up there and ask some questions. You want to fix America? This is the formula. It worked for Reagan. There you go. Our team in Ohio. Thank you. Yes, yes. Have a drink. Yeah, gotta have a drink. Actually, no, that might be free. Yeah, and the thing about three Reagans, three This whole war on drugs. Like, I understand what he's saying. He doesn't want to give mixed messages to the kids, but the fact is, a lot of these kids are seeing their parents go to prison, nonviolent offenders. It destroys families for you know for smoking something. You know, and what kind of mixed message is that? That you would so eagerly put somebody into prison that you would uh, release like a violent offender, like a rapist or a murderer. They've gone to break. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with our live coverage of the third GOP debate. This is InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight with Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs. We'll be right back. Oh, hey, sorry. I was just admiring the brand new shipment of Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirts. We just got them in on the back. It says InfoWars.com, legalize freedom. Everybody here is super excited today. No one wants that woman to become the president of the United States. Whoa, whoa look at this. Jacory Jackson even has his on. Whoa. What's what, going on? What a coincidence that we would wear the same t-shirt on the same day. That's a very nice jacket you have on there, Biggs, as well. Yeah, I, I, when we're talking about this Hillary for Prison t-shirt that's only 1995 at the InfoWars store, it reminds me of just the kind of aura of Mrs. Clinton. Because, of course, we know she lied about being shot at by sniper fire. You know, Brian Williams had a similar lie. Not to mention the whole Benghazi scandal, where she was alerted to the plight of Ambassador Stevens, but instead of sending aid to Ambassador Stevens, she actually took that aid away. And, Joe, I'm, I'm noticing something right there on your hip. What do you have there? Oh, this is something that Hillary Clinton doesn't like. This is a gun. Hillary Clinton doesn't want you to have the ability to protect yourself if someone wants to hurt you. There's crazy people out there. Well, you know, Joe, there are crazy people out there. So for that reason right there, I keep mine uh, right here handy as well. So uh, I guess you can just not like that, Hillary. Well, guess what? Go pick up your Hillary for Prison t-shirt and piss off a liberal. Let's go see what the rest of the crew's doing here at the InfoWars studio. So occasionally, you're going to run into a friend that doesn't have a t-shirt. <laughs> Rob, where is your shirt at? It's right. No, wrong shirt. There That's why is. you buy there multiple Hillary for Prison t-shirts. You can help out a buddy in need. But be prepared like this guy and have yours on. Darren, Make sure you're prepared. <laughs> Darren, always prepared. Make sure you go to the InfoWars <laughs> store and pick up your Hillary for Prison t-shirt and show your disapproval today. social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. You're listening.
liver can be full of fatty deposits built up. The InfoWars Nightly News live coverage of the third GOP debate. We're taking a little bit of a break. We just came back. And of course, I think it's interesting.